take two on this video because I was not fast enough. This video should be 10 minutes to 14 minutes and I was running 18. So real quick, let's dive in. I'm comparing Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, and uh, uh, Foundry VTT. Uh, they have lots of different pros and cons. I can't obviously hit all of them. So I'm gonna fly through some of them as fast as possible. Roll20, pros, free account. However, if you do have to get the model, there's no one price per paid, it's subscription. And the free account is very, very limited. No. Uh, dynamic lighting, there's no custom character sheets, there's no API access, uh, blah, 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 um, as you can see on the screen here. Also, if you're going to pay for it, $50 a year doesn't really get you what you really want out of it, which is API access, which allows you to put a couple cool things in there that the community have built. You need to pay the $100 a year, um, and uh, with even with $100 a year, you're still capped at things like 8 meg or 10 meg or whatever it is, very small map sizes and token sizes and things like that. However, Roll20, where it shines, where this is the the reason I would tell people to go to Roll20 is it's easy to set up, easy to get into the game. It's perfect for beginners. It's perfect for pandemic online players. However, the software itself is a little bit of, is a little bit sluggish. You're not getting a well uh, polished machine. This is the this is a a old Toyota that's been running uh, for a very long time, or old car that has 250,000 miles on it, and it's old, reliable. But, uh, but going up some of those hills, it's going to be a, eh, a little bit of a, should we get out and push? There's no flexibility, no extensibility would be a better way of putting that. Um, very little, at least. One out of ten. Uh, when they make big changes, sometimes things break. They're not The devs are not very communicative. The video, in, you have video for your uh, communication and audio in the game. It doesn't work very well. Um, recommended you just go use Discord. Uh, audio, recommended go use a bot on Discord. It does not work very well inside the game. Uh, ambient sounds don't work well. Again, just use Discord for all of that. It has no Discord community that I could find. And the Reddit is small compared to some of the other communities. Um, and uh, unless you have the $100 tier, you can't use the extensions anyway. You can't do any extensibility. And there's really not a lot of communication from the devs. But uh, those things are all cons that are easily fixed with the other two pieces of software that I'm looking at. But the big, uh, the big pro for Roll20 is you can do a free account. And if you are a DM and you want to get started and today's Wednesday and you have a game on Friday uh, and you want to just get into the game and you're only doing this because you have to, uh, Roll20 is for you. Make an account, drop a couple maps on, make a couple tokens, easy peasy, send a link to your players, they'll get in and you'll be good to go. Um, you're not going to stick around forever. It's just like you're sitting at the table, but uh, but online, so it's nothing like just sitting at the table. But as far as like, hey, I just want to play, and I only have an hour, Roll20 is your man. Roll20 is your software, not your man. Uh, Roll20 doesn't actually have a gender or sexual preference. Uh, Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds is the other one. So Fantasy Grounds uh, is a huge step up for Roll20. I'm really not going to be comparing Roll20 against the other two because the other two are so far out of Roll20's league. Roll20 is just for if you want to get started and you want an easy peasy system and you don't want to have any complexity. Fantasy Grounds and Foundry, they compare against each other because they have lots of complexity. Uh, Fantasy Grounds, a pro, you can have a single purchase for a lifetime. Uh, or you can uh, pay ten dollars a month for the first three months uh, for th ninety nine for first three months, then ninety nine monthly. So that uh, yes, that brings to one of the cons: the layouts and the stuff for their websites are not very good. Um, for example, uh, when you get here, you just see free demo, and if you don't click see details, you don't know that the free demo actually doesn't allow you to demo anything. All you can do is get into a game. You can't build anything. You can't take a look at any of the, uh, um, you can't take a look at any combat maps and anything. You can't actually play around with it and get your hands dirty. Um, so there really is no free option. You have to pay for it. But uh, you can pay one pr time and get it. And, and you'll continue to get whatever improvements they make to Fantasy Grounds Unity. That's what the U stands for. Um, however, if you do subscribe, it does not go towards the purchase price. They're very clear about that in the terms and conditions. Uh, and uh, so if you're going to try it out, you should probably just purchase it for a month, try it out, and then buy it for the whole thing. They have no built-in audio, so that means no ambience. There, that means no uh, combat music. None of that is built in. They also don't have any built-in video, and they've said they're not going to do either one of those because uh, if they do it, they want to do it right, and they feel like it's going to take too much to get that right. 
no dynamic lighting. Um, extensions are difficult to install and update. There's not very many of them and it's a pain in the butt to get. However, the dynamic lighting front, they are continually rolling out new things and that is a pro on the side of Fantasy Grounds as their, their devs are being communicative with their um, community about what's coming next. Uh, backwards compatibility. When you buy the Monster Manual today, it's going to work in five years. Uh, matter of fact, the stuff that is purchased six, seven years ago, the people I talked to, still works just fine, even as they've been making improvements. They're making sure that there's backwards compatibility or they update your stuff, so that way you always get to use it. Amazing and helpful Discord community uh, and Reddit. I went on there, asked one question, people came out of the woodwork to come give me a hand. Um, uh, even though Fantasy Grounds is known for its difficulty in... Uh, learning it has a very steep learning curve with Fantasy Ground Unity, which is this versus Fantasy Ground Classic, which got that reputation. Fantasy Ground Unity has only been around a year. Uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity is has a much less steep learning curve, and they apply the same design principles across everything. Which to some people that will be very confusing, but uh, just know that as you learn how things work uh, a little bit at a time, it makes learning the other things um, a lot faster. Once you learn how uh, a, a uh, NPC sheet work. It's very easily understood how a PC sheet work. It's very easily understood how uh, map making works and stuff like that because you realize how they have designed everything to work together. Um, also, uh, Fantasy Grounds and Wizards of the Coast are working together. You can buy your books and adventures, and when you do so, you get the maps, the NPCs, the PC, uh, anything, items that might be in the game, and stuff on the map is where it belongs. So, um, say you are doing Storm Seeing Thunder, there's a battle map, you load it up, all the monsters are already there for you. You don't have to figure out where they go by reading. It's just very well linked together. You can click on different things and it points to where it is in the module. Very, very well done. Um, and honestly, uh, if you are just running um, pre-made adventures, go with Fantasy Grounds. If that's how you're going to be making your stuff, go with Fantasy Grounds. It has, the, like, I'm very impressed with how they did it. Cons, super steep learning curve. According to uh, Fantasy Grounds College, which is a volunteer uh 2000 person subreddit who they help people become uh or sorry 2000 person discord and they help people become uh experts in fantasy ground it takes four to 12 hours before you people walk away going yes i know everything there is to know about fantasy grounds four hours just to like get there and then 12 hours to become an expert two hours as a player four hours as a dm and then two to four hours to become just a master player where you're like yes i fully understand everything um, again, uh, the layout is actually quite complex. They don't follow some design principles that I think they should follow. But then again, I don't have a multi-thousand or million dollar company. Uh, however, I found the layout to be very complex. Um, I didn't even like, for example, when I downloaded my free demo, I installed it and tried to make it do some stuff. And there's nothing that said, hey, this is a free demo. You aren't able to do it. They just simply block your ability to do the stuff and no explanation and that's actually a lot in the game is like there's a button and you're like i think that might be that what it does but there's no explanation there's no hover text there's nothing that makes you go oh i understand what i'm supposed to be doing here so it has very little intuitive design uh, also you can't import from dnd beyond you have to rebuy everything full price that being said like i said when you do buy it it just works and it, they do a fantastic job at that um so who should be using Fantasy Grounds? People who want to use modules or built-in stuff. Like if you are Storm Team Thunder, Lost Minds, Curse of Strahd, and you want to just go and do that, you use Fantasy Grounds. Uh, if you want to play 3.5, Pathfinder 1 or 2, 5e, 4e, Fantasy Grounds will do that. Uh, but if you want to have the ability to make your virtual tabletop uh, if you go, man, I really wish it could do this, uh, then the Fantasy Grounds is not for you. Uh, Foundry is for you. If you if you want to be able to make it do whatever you want it to do, you want to go with Foundry. If you want it to, if you just trust that other people have figured out the best way to do things, and you just want to play some D and D and not have to think about how uh, you know your system just works, then you want to go with Fantasy Grounds. Um, they don't have, by the way, they're they have cloud servers, but they're not persistent, so your worlds don't stay up uh, to be accessed later. That's a yeah, just a side note. Uh, difficulty for Fantasy Grounds, I would say it's a 3 out of 10. 10 being super easy uh, to start for the GMs. 5 out of 10 for the players, providing the GMs set everything up. Extensibility, 2 out of 10. 5 out of 10 for mastering everything. Uh, 4 out of 10 for the players mastering everything. Foundry. All right, I got I hit my 10-minute mark, so I got four minutes to talk about Foundry. Foundry is my favorite. I'm going to have to do a lot of videos about Foundry. I plan on doing more about it. Um, Pros for Foundry, $50, you own it. You own it forever. Uh, on top of that, say they stopped developing and working on it right now, 
uh, because the API is available to everybody, because it was designed for people to make it whatever they wanted, um, even if the dev died tomorrow, we'd still the foundry would still continue to get better and better. Um, and and so when you pay that fifty dollars, you get a solid, great system that'll work. And you can make it do whatever you want, freeze it in time, whatever you want. Um, tons of extensibility. So here's the thing about Foundry: they have 107 game systems uh, from anything from Mutant Z Year Zero, Pathfinder One. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade, Wrath and Glory, uh, Talisman, tons of game systems, 5e, Pathfinder, 3.5, all of that jazz. On top of that, they have 671 mods that people have made from 3D dice rolling to uh, automating your attacks and things. Uh, now, obviously, not every one of these is for 5e. It's mods for different games that people play. But that's the thing about Foundry that makes it super big and super uh, why it's taking the uh, VTT community by storm is because if you want to do it, you can probably find somebody who made a mod for it or you can make a mod yourself for it. And it has a super helpful community as well. Um, say, equal to Fantasy Grounds. You go in, you ask a question, people are willing to help. Nobody says, oh, go read the blogs or go whatever. Um, con though, it is relatively new. It's only a year old in terms of being out in the marketplace. So there's not a lot of content on YouTube about how to do something. You kind of do have to go to the discords. And it's still being developed, which means occasionally uh, they might make a change to make things easier for people that will break other things. For example, uh, soon they're going to be working on the revamping the in-game audio to provide uh, a better uh, user experience. And in doing so, I fully expect that some audio people's audio is not going to, it's going to break once they do that. But they're very quick about fixing things like that too. So um, one persistent world per license. And here's the big one, Fantasy Ground or Foundry, very resource heavy. Uh, you, It's going to hit your Chrome pretty hard. Um, it wants to use your graphics processor, is resource heavy, but at the same time, you get tons of bells and whistles, animated maps, animated tokens, animated tiles. You can have spell effects that are animated. You can have dynamic lighting, uh, flickers and ma and walls. All of this, uh, some of this was modules, some of it built in, um, and there's tons of loads of free maps, music, and content. There's You can import your stuff from D&D &D, D &D Beyond, and you can roll from D&D &D Beyond and have it roll inside Foundry. All with, These are all modules that people have made um and um uh the the pathway for what they're working on clear communication from the devs and the great thing is if there isn't a module that does something you want you could probably make a module that'll do something you want um player learning curve to become an expert is probably about two hours four if you're really slow dm four to eight hours uh so it does take some prep time to get there um i i just brought in a player who uh uh, a DM who used to DM with me in Roll20, he came into here, uh, spent two hours in here, said, man, I love Foundry, and then spent the next 16 hours uh, over the course of a week digging into all the modules and learning what everything do does, and he says there's a couple things that doesn't do great, but things go really well in there. Uh, Foundry does, does have audio that plays inside. It also has a video player and, um, and mic, so you can use all inside of it and self-contained, uh, but there's a yeah, if you go above five people, so DM and four players, it starts to get a little bit crackly. It uh, you need really good internet to use that. So sometimes you just have to jump over to Discord for your video and uh, microphone. However, the in-game audio works splendidly. Uh, and it's individually controlled by the player. So uh, one of the big cons is you can break it. I can get two modules that impact the dice. Like I want to do 3D dice rolling, but I also want to do dice that fly. And both of those impact the dice. And because of that, neither one of them works. So it takes a little bit of going, hmm, how did I break my stuff? Um, can't do that with Foundry. Uh, but you can do that, or can't do that with Fantasy Grounds, but you can do that with Foundry. So uh, I've hit my 14 minute mark. Uh, my recommendation, who's going to use Foundry? Foundry is for the person who is always tinkering, who always wants to do a little bit more, who always uh, looks like when they look at all the other VTTs, they go, man, I kind of wish I could also do because in uh, Fantasy Grounds, can't really do. But in Foundry, you can do that. If you go, oh, I wish it could do, you could make it. You could hire somebody to make it. Or you can maybe find if somebody else has made it. Most of the time when I need a module, I go, hey, does anyone have a module that does X? And somebody goes, oh, yeah, this module does that. So uh, all that being said, uh, my recommendation, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on Foundry because I believe that Foundry is... Uh, well, it does have its flaws about being able to be broken and 
some other things i believe foundry is superior to fantasy grounds in that if you're a homebrew dm and you want to always be tinkering um, this is the system for you uh, thanks for watching uh, a lot of this information will be put in the comments below um, and uh, links as well to the websites uh, and until i see you next time uh, i guess happy dming or may your dice always roll nat 20 i really don't know what a sign off is supposed to be see you next time